Hi, welcome back. Just before we get going, I do want to point out a mistake that I've made in the last episode, and I continue to make the same mistake in this episode. This piece of marine here, these guys cannot travel across this marine in order to expand into new territory. Okay, this acts as a blocker. Because they don't have the M DNA, they can't cross this water. So this should not have expanded into here, and I think I'll do the same again. I expand this predator into here. So forgive my mistake, keep an eye on it, I'll point it out when I make that mistake, but at some point during this episode these guys are going to grab the M DNA and size up, so it should kind of sort itself out, but look out for that. Anyway, enjoy the episode, see you next time. Welcome back. We're fighting for survival in megafauna, dinosaurs versus mammals. It's my turn, and we've got to try and mutate somehow. Our DNA stack's getting quite big here, but our home biome is quite strong. We want to be able to expand around a little bit, I think. There's plenty of grazers, uh, browsers, for us to predate on. What might be cool is if we can get another species off and running, but we don't have enough DNA. It might be nice to try and move into these marine areas, but there's only three marine biomes, which isn't good. I'm looking at this one or this one, and I fear that if I don't take this marine one, then my competitor will. The problem with this, these little teeth here, Shrews, moles, and bats is they, they're size one. And I could I could move my size down, but then I'm going to lose some predators. I'm wondering whether I might go amphibious. I can enter land or sea, but I lose one. It says minus one off my regression range. I might have to up my size. It does open up these areas here potentially. I think for now I'm going to try and slow that board down a little bit and get some more predators out on the on the board. Let's do that. Let's grab a predator and um, this one's got a very low climax so that's a very fragile biome and so is this one too. Mm -hmm. This one is a lot stronger but the velociraptors are there and I can't compete with those. So I could go here but it's risky. It's risky. What to do? I think I'll take a chance. I'm going to, I'm going to keep with that. If I take another card now, it's going to end the year round. I'm going to lose. Um, they're going to move into the double B that was available, which is this one, the broadleaf conifer forest. Because um, they've got double B, that's fine. I'm going to keep predating them. Let's head into this one. I think they're going to grab needle teeth. That's what they're going to do. Tricky one. That's alright, we've got Sculling Tail, which I can take next time and move into that amphibious area. Right, they're going to take Needle Teeth. They won't take anything that makes them marine, so they're not going to take any more M's, because two M's makes them marine. Um, but Amphibian is fine, and that reduces their range uh, down to two, but it does open up some of these areas for them. This is kind of a so you've got a 1M here, you see. Uh, this is only 1M. So these amphibious ones, they can kind of browse around these, these shores. Oh, they forgot to pay. They forgot to pay. They've got to put a gene in. Right. The next card is Cordal Fin. It's a double M. Draw and place two new era tiles. One, two. Let's see what we get. Oops. Um, it's an immigrant, it's a herbivore in the Arctic region. It's got H-I-I-N, so it's quite a good one. It's going to go into this place here. It's the only biome, and it supplies insects, and they, they're insect eating. That's no problem. Next, we have a tropical biome, Calamite Thicket. 
Like this might cause a bit of trouble. Which is the lowest climax one? It is 24. No, 10. Yeah, this is where the problems begin. Oh, that's a shame. I knew it was a, I knew it was a risk. What can you do? Okay, this one's going to replace this one. And the problem here is... Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's got only needs a B, um, and they've got a B, so they're going to survive in there, which means my predator doesn't lose its prey. Okay, this goes to the tar pit. And that was the last card from the period, so we now have to do our end scoring. Now we know they've won, they've got one, two, three, four, five animals, I've only got four. So what we do is we run to the tar pit, we count the number in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight in here, so we take half of them, that's four, and we give them to, to Tusker, the player with the winning score. I don't lose out because then there are four remaining, you take half of those, two, two remaining go back to the tar pit, and the two becomes my score. So although they won four points, I got two points, we're only two behind, so it's not too bad. And this goes into my fossil record. And that means we've now entered the Jurassic period, and it's my turn. I think, I, I know this is bad, but let's take the skull and tail. Our dino croc is now amphibious. We grab one of these, and it goes in the M spot. And we really have to start diversifying now. And I think we can do it, because we've only got one guy left here. So let's... Um, Let's crack on. Let's draw a new card from the Jurassic period this time. And it's fur. Size 1 to 4. We can grow some fur. Draw and place two new era tiles. You've got to go careful developing long strands, long stacks of DNA because at some point there's going to be a couple of catastrophic events hitting the board. And when they do, the bigger the stack, the more likely it is that you will be impacted. There you go. Just to, to, to let you know, you, know, you don't want to diversify. <laughs> yeah, you know, have too much going on here because you're, you're more at risk. Um, what we really want to do now is try and diversify, get a new species out if we can. Okay, we've got a marine one. It's lobsters in tropics. This is a new biome and it's going to hit 18. That's bad news because the calamite thicket goes to the tar pit and this herd of war can no longer survive here, it needs two M's um, and I think, yeah I've only got one M so I'm not going to survive here either, this guy's going to go back to the supply yeah, let's try the second one this is tree ferns um, it's in the jet stream terrestrial biome in the number one slot. Dummy's turn. There's a couple of options now on the board. There's a double B here, there's tree ferns, that's climax 34. That's a new one. And then anything with an M. Its range is only two now. Not that one, not that one, not that one. It's a B, it's G, 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 like we've got this one. And this one. I think that's it. Right, we've got climax 46, 48, 34. Right, it's going to expand into the tree ferns biome. Which is here, so it's still building up. Now is the time for me to create a new species. I think these crocodiles would be good. So, first thing we do is choose a parent. It's going to be this predator here. It's size 2. Um, it's got the M gene, so its migration range is one left. It's only got a migration range of one. I can move in here or, or here. This has got a climax 48, this is 50. And it's protected somewhat by the mountains. So I'm going to go this way, I think. I choose a silhouette. Let's go for the crocs. Um, and it forms a new species stack. 
and it can inherit attributes from its parent. Okay. Now we begin the process of inheritance. Um, it inherits the size of its parent, so we're going to place another a croc down here in size two. It can inherit some or all of the DNA from one rover on a track, and we're going to grab it from the, the M track because we want the M DNA. So we need to grab a croc and put it up on the M. I mean, we could go on A, but that's not helping us move around. It can only be one, so we'll grab M. So it too is amphibious. Remember, we can use these little markers here to remind us that he's a marine amphibian, minus one migration range. And next, it can inherit one or more dietary DNA owned by the parents. Uh, but you can only, the limitation is you can only use one inheritance tile. These are the inheritance tile. We've got, we got five at the start. So as long as you've got the DNA to represent what you're grabbing, what you're inheriting from your parent, you can use it. So for example, there's one for BB. There's one for a B. But there's nothing for a triple B. So I couldn't have a, you know, to take, take three Bs. There's nothing for uh, B and, and P. So I couldn't take a B and a P, right? There's B, double B. There's P, double P. There's I, G, H, B, G, double G. So I could, if I wanted, take a single or a double P from my parent. Well, why don't we take the double P? That sounds like a good, a good thing to do. So we can take this inheritance tile. It's out for the rest of the game. So any of my other species, they won't be able to inherit P from anyone. I don't have to take it, but why not? Okay. So we've got one double P, and you've always got to watch the, the size requirements on these inheritance tiles too. We're size two, and this, this one is, a, is one to six anyway. I'm just wondering actually whether it would be better to go this way because of the niche, the P. This one has a niche of N. Let's go this way. Let's go this way because of the P's. Right, I'm going to inherit double P, so I'm going to do well over here. Right, so we've done all our inheriting, we've got our new crocodile, and now we decide its, its destination. So we're going to go here. Now actually we could go here and predate. We predate these guys. They're armoured, aren't we? So we couldn't protect those. We couldn't predate those because we haven't got any A genes. But we're going to compete with them as a herbivore. Now remember, what you do is you check the, the niche. The niche here is P. This has got an A, M, M. It doesn't have any P's. We've got two P's, physiology. So we're going to outperform these because of our niche. So the champsosaurs, these six to size two herbivores, they're going to go off to the tar pit. Good job. Now we've got a few more options. It's two Tuskers turn. And we've not placed any more biomes, so there's no browsers anywhere. They're going to head into one of these marine places and I think they're going to come and compete with us. Interesting. So they're going to, well that's kind of a good thing actually because what that means is they're going to come in here and they could go there but that's 48. Remember they go to Elias Climax 46 and we're going to compete. I've got more peas, they don't have any peas. But can they move and become an amphibious predator of me? I think they can. If we take a quick look up here, they've got the same level M as us. We've got no A's, N's or S's yet. Yeah, they can predate us fine. So in this case, although we outperform them, they become a predator of us. Feeding on these little crocs. Now I'm wondering whether... At this point, I could choose to make these crocs little. I think that would be a good thing. If I make these size 1, these can no longer predate these. The prey is too small. That means this guy is 
going to die off. And the next time, I could potentially be taking that and then developing a new species of herbivore, um, terrestrial herbivore with G and I. Yeah, I like this plan. What's interesting now is what the two tasker will do because the rules say it moves into the rather expands into the lowest climax habitable biome in range, which is this one. For as long as this guy's here, every turn they're going to be doing this, 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 this. Should it not move in there because it, it's not really habitable because of the presence of these other herbivores? I'm not sure about that. You know, strictly speaking, by the rules, we should be going in here every turn. But I'm not sure I like that. So I'm going to just just say, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we need um, an errata, and this should be in the rules, that by habitable, it will expand into a, a habitable biome if it can successfully compete at the point it makes the decision. Otherwise, it's just silly. You know, I've stored the... Um, I've stored dummy player here now, I'm free to do what I want, and he's not going to respond in any way. Now we know he's not intelligent, but that kind of breaks the game a little bit to do this. And the only time that's potentially going to change is if um, you know, things start, start changing with climate, but I think the, the right thing to do here, leave some comments, this, this, you know, have a discussion about it, but the way I'm going to play is that he won't move in here if he can't compete with the resident herbivore. So he's going to move in here instead on his turn.